welcome to another one everyone i know i have not held a fishing rod here and a few on the channel um i've been out pretty much dove hunting and getting some duck and goose stuff ready and that's really about it so i haven't really been out fishing in a while and i figure it is a perfect time to get out and try fishing again so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going down to the local creek that i've been fishing in other videos that you guys have seen and while i'm down there at the local creek we're just going to go try out a new spinning reel right here that i got and then we're just going to see if we can get any smallies today i'm hoping for a few smallies i just need to test this reel out and see how i like it for some other videos that i'm gonna have coming out for you guys of comparisons on different reels so anyways i'm gonna get down there get to the creek and i'll see you guys when i'm there We're gonna see if we can't get something on a little Ned today. I think we should, we usually can here. Oh, there goes my camera. There we go, I almost lost my camera there for a second. But, we're gonna see if we can't get anything on a Ned rig here. Usually we can, usually we don't have an issue at all. So, we're gonna go ahead and check and see. If not, we'll just keep on walking, try to get something. If we don't get anything, I got something else we can do later tonight when we get back to my house. Real quick before we get started, I'm gonna show you guys my new bag that I got for these uh, fishing adventures I go on. This is the Yeti Panga backpack, 28 liter, whatever quart bag, I believe. It's got fully waterproof inside. It's just pretty basic because they did go for that fully waterproof design on it. So it's got a really good zipper right here. It's got one front compartment, a slot in the back that I've got my tackle tray on, and uh, I can have all my other stuff right here. So really cool backpack. I just got it in. This is my first time using it. So we'll see how I like it today. So far, I think it's going to be sweet because I need that fully waterproof capability for when I'm fishing because I don't want any of my stuff to go bad or get wet or anything while I'm fishing. So I'm really excited about that bag. Hopefully it works out pretty well, but let's get down here and get to fishing. I can already say this reel is insanely light. It feels a lot lighter than what it actually is. Well, I want there to be a fish in here. I would think there would be. But, I don't know. If this reel holds up like I think it will be, or how I think it will, this is probably gonna be my favorite reel because this reel is really light, and I love the way it looks too. And uh, if it's durable, that's all that you matter, or that's all that matters, and this thing is gonna be a killer reel. One more cast and we're gonna move downstream a little bit to the next set of ripples. All right, let's go to the other set of ripples. I know that uh, always hearing running water in videos can be annoying and scraping can be annoying too, but that, uh, that was awful what I was just hearing that train go by. That was the worst scrape I've heard in a while from trains. Of course, I casted right up there in between rocks. My leader not broke, of course. Well, heading to another section now no luck at that spot but you know this is just one of the unfortunate truths about fall fishing or summer to fall transition fishing in ohio early fall fishing whatever you want to call it is it can be really really tough so some areas can be really good some areas can be really tough the river here or creek here whatever you want to call it may just be one of the ones that's really tough i'm not sure I've never fished it this time of year. So we're uh, just walking upstream a little bit. Gonna find another little stretch that I've caught fish on on one of the Google Maps challenges before that I did out here. See if we can't catch any fish up here and hopefully we do. But like I said, if not, I got something else we can go back to my house and do. 
I got some duck decoys and goose decoys in the mail. So I can do a little bit of an unboxing for those in a decoy rigging session. So we'll see what happens up here. Oh, we are literally downtown in my city. I mean, this is the main road that goes through downtown that I'm about to pass underneath under this bridge. So that kind of tells you what kind of areas we're fishing. Like these are literally just random creeks flowing through the town. That's the whole purpose of what I like fishing about these areas this year is because it's a lot of fun going, trying out new areas, catching a fish somewhere where you really would not expect to be catching fish at. We'll go right here for a few. Got some new braid on this too. And actually so far I'm really enjoying it. Um, I wasn't sure what I would think. There's one. That might be a decent fish. Oh yeah, that's a decent small. Oh my gosh, there's a massive smallie right there. Let's get down here to be able to land this fish. Oh yeah, that's not a bad smallie at all. There was a huge, I think it was a large mouth that just swam off. That had to have been a large mouth. It was skinny and it was really long. But looky there, that you really can't beat that right there, guys. Just was talking about how I'm literally in the middle of my uh, town underneath a bridge fishing. And looky there, that's a fat smallie feeding up for the winter. So we're going to go ahead and get a release on him here in a second. And hopefully we can get this other one that's swimming around down here. Oh, feisty little creek smallie back into the creek. Well, there we go, guys. Got my first fish, and it actually was a pretty nice smallie um, for this area. So, let's just hope another one's in here and wants to munch. We're gonna move a little bit down here. This time of year should be when the big piggy smallmouth are feeding. So I hope this fall I can get my PB out of this creek and just catch a pretty big small mouth out of this creek anyways. My goal is to try to catch one over two pounds and uh, so far I haven't really gotten close. That was probably a one pounder I just caught. So we got a little ways to go if we want to catch a two pounder in here. There's a pretty good deep hole right here straight down this bank because there's a rock line and I think that's the only reason why there is a deep hole. I don't know though, but it's all the way down this bank. So I'm hoping there'll be one in here. I think there should be. I'm wondering if like a little jerk bait or something may work right here. With all these rocks and all the bait fish, it's a possibility. Moving one more time, no luck since the one I got, but I have a feeling we'll at least get one more. There's a turtle right there. That's a soft, sh soft shell turtle. So gonna get back to fishing. I think I'm gonna get another one right here soon. So let's see. There's one. Oh my gosh, there was. There we go. Rock bass went straight down into the rocks. I told you guys. I told you. I thought I was going to get another fish here soon. It's not a small deal like we're after, but at least it is a fish. See you later, mister. Tell your buddies to come up and say hi. Oh my gosh, there was another one. That was probably a rock bass. Well, it's like perfect timing and I probably a sign, but my GoPro ended up dying. So I think that's a sign that, you know, I'm not gonna have much more luck and to maybe call it a day. So I'm heading back to my truck right now. We're gonna go back to my house, see what all came in the mail and uh, do a little bit of an unboxing for you guys now. So we'll see you when we get back to the house. Well, we're back at my house and I've got all my new decoys right here, which is really just two packs. So let's go ahead, open these up and check them out and just see what all's inside of here. So these were on sale on Rogers and I needed some new decoys. So I figured I would just pick them up while they were on sale. Um, I got some geese, got some mallards, and then I also got some rigs for the mallards, some Texas rigs. So I think those are in the same box as the mallards. And I'm thinking these are the same geese that I already have. Um, I have, or at least the same type of geese. So yeah, they look like it. 
Yep, life-size goose floater. Look pretty good. We'll open all these up. So we got all the geese floaters right there. Flocked heads, really good colors to them. Look like what geese should look like. So I'm gonna stick these right up here. They all have uh, four different head positionings for them, so which is kind of nice. So they'll go well with the other ones I've got. These all my others I think are resters or sleepers, whatever you want to call them, with their head down. So let's grab mallards and check these out. I don't know what these look like. I have never had uh, green head gear or Avery uh, mallards before. And I think my Texas rigs are in here too. Now these are not flocked heads, so we'll have to see what they're gonna be like. They look actually pretty good. Yep, and my Texas rigs are in here. Of course, got the Texas rigs for them all. I'm really starting to like Texas rigs for mallards instead of rope or anything like that. I think they work out a little bit better. Oh, how do these things work? Not sure what all you guys saw because my SD card just said that there was no more space on my one, so I just swapped it out. But I got all my mallards rigged up right here. So as you guys see, they're all on four ounce, I think they're four ounce, actually they're six ounce Texas rigs. Um, I like them this way now. That way I can hang them easier. They're easier to store in my house and uh, that they're also, I think that the Texas rigs are a little bit easier for some of these shallow water uh, ponds and stuff that I'm hunting. So I would, I just prefer these Texas rigs for at least these big mallards. I do have some small mallards that are about the size of the teal that I like some strings for, but I think I'm gonna take four or six off of those or four off of those and put them on the geese. That way I can have strings on the geese because geese primarily I'm gonna be hunting on a pond or something that either a field, a pond, or somewhere maybe that has some deeper water in it. And because of that, I would just like deeper, to have longer strings and stuff for the geese. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video of fishing and getting some of my decoys ready, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Drop any video ideas down in the comments below. So anyways, thank you for watching if you're watching this far, and we'll see you in the next one.